Virgo, hello Virgo, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Let's find out what's going on with Virgo and what does Virgo need to know? The hanged man came out first. Ooh, we've got the 10 of pentacles. And one more. All right, for the sake of the group, interesting message. You may have to sort of um, l let go of trying to control the outcome of the situation. For the sake of the harmony of the family right now, it seems like you may be self-sacrificing or you're not putting up a fight. You're you're choosing to concede to someone else's demands, someone else's ideas, opinions. I get the sense that for the sake of the the group, the the family, the office space, the environment, the other people around you right now, it just looks like you are sacrificing yourself for the greater good or for greater harmony amongst people that you don't even really agree with them. You don't really like what they're doing or there's some tension and friction and conflict in this community, in this organization, in this group of people. And it seems like you are choosing to take a back seat you are deciding not to get involved. You look like you are keeping your opinion to yourself, sacrificing, letting it go, deciding not to fight because you feel like it's not worth it. Or let's get some, it's like you wanna preserve the status quo. You wanna maintain order. You wanna maintain a certain level of, I don't know, integrity or respectability or an image. You, you want to maintain stability somehow. You don't want to get drawn into a chaotic, you don't want to destabilize the situation. You don't want a confrontation. You may be avoiding confrontation. You're trying to keep the peace. So you are sacrificing yourself or you're not speaking up or you are, you're letting it go. You're like, whatever will be, will be. It is what it is. I'm, I feel like maybe you're tired. Like you're saying, I don't have the energy to fight this. It almost feels like it's every man for themselves, or you feel like everyone disagrees with you or you would have to argue with five different other people and everybody has their own opinion and nobody's listening. That's the general sense that I'm getting so far. Let's get some clarity on this. That's like the vibe. Okay, this is actually possibly a really strong strategy for you. Like you are being recognized for, for, hold on now, six of cups. For your sensitive, oh, the devil, for your sensitivity. I almost feel like you, this may even be in a romantic partnership or Hang on, oh, five of pentacles. You're really disappointed in how something has turned out. The past, the way that you've dealt with things in the past. I think you've learned some hard lessons from the past. You have memories of, there's some, some kind of memories that are at play here. Like you do not want to repeat similar situations that you've already experienced like you've already been there done that or it is what it is and you feel like you are gaining self-control you may not be winning every argument here also i've got five 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 six six fifteen ten twelve two a lot of synchronicities here Things are changing and you know it's not gonna be this way forever. You feel like you've gotten control of yourself, like this is discipline. You're presenting a very serious face to the world, a very stoic face. You may 
like fantasize about or th think about how to, I feel like you're imagining how it would go if you were to succeed or beat the competition, a, a visualizing success in this situation. And it's almost as if you've taken refuge in fantasy. You know what I'm really seeing here? This might not even be you. This could be somebody else that you're dealing with. I feel like somebody has delusions of grandeur, okay? Somebody thinks that they are the winner, that they are the best, that they are the greatest, and this may be someone's ego. It's like a fantasy of victory. And what does that mean? It's like somebody who thinks that they are the greatest, that they are the best, that they are always right. And you don't want to deal with this person. You want to look forward to the future. You're making plans for the future because this is disappointing you. This is not working for you. This person's not cooperative. They imagine that they are always right or that they know what's best. They imagine themselves as like the main character. I don't even know if this is you because it's a very different energy than what we were getting in the first line here. Like you may be dealing with someone who thinks they are always right and this is like not working for you. I feel like you're trying to make peace. You're trying to maintain your image as a peacekeeper or um, a very loving, caring, understanding, compassionate person. But really, you're not happy in this situation. There's a lot of conflict here and these challenges are leading you to growth you can see this challenge as an opportunity for growth, but you're definitely at an inflection point or you have a decision to make in this situation. Are you going to continue to deal with someone who is, they, they need a lot of attention. They need a lot of praise and agreement. They expect you to just say yes to everything at your own expense. And you're not really happy there. You feel like kind of miserable. Like this is this is very disappointing. It's not living up to what you what you need from a relationship. So you're looking for what you really need. I feel like you have a sort of nostalgic or emotional attachment to whoever this is that you are sacrificing yourself for and you thought it was going to be better than this you thought that it was going to be more supportive than this you expected support and you're not really getting it you expected partnership and companionship but it's not very healthy and it's not very reciprocal. It makes you feel like you don't really have what you need. You're not getting what you need from the situation, but it's not worth fighting for. So you're thinking about your next right moves. You're thinking about the next thing. You're moving on. In your heart, you've already kind of started moving on. You've given up. I feel like you put up you you know, you put up your hands and you're like, "Okay, you know what? Fine. It is what it is." But I don't think I I don't I don't think you're going to stay there forever. I don't see you sticking around in a situation where you feel like you give so much and you don't receive even half as much as you really need. I feel like you give without expectation. I feel like you're a very almost like selfless person. You give a lot of yourself. You are happy to give of yourself, to be of service to others. I just feel like 
there's got to be some minimum standard of reciprocity and I'm just not seeing that. I see you dealing with someone who can be very egotistical, materialistic. Perhaps the conflict is over money. They spend your money. They spend the money that you don't have on things that you don't really need. There may be addictions at play here, you know, addiction uh, of some kind, shopping, even drugs or alcohol, and you're starting to have a wake-up call here. I feel like you thought it was one thing. You thought you were, because this person could be very charming, right? You thought you were in a healthy relationship with a very loving person, but you're starting to realize that there's another side to them or there's a there's a darkness in the environment, in the system, in the situation. It's like baked into the cake. And we all have our shadow side. That's okay. We are supposed to have our shadow side. We are dualistic beings in a paradoxical universe, of course. We are we are light and shadow. We have a profound darkness and a powerful light within us and we're meant to, to be aware of and integrate both of those things. But when somebody is not doing the work, not doing their part to integrate that shadow side, to understand it, to be self-aware of it, and to basically control it so that it doesn't control you, then that can run amok and start to cause problems for people around them. When someone has an, a shadow side that is not integrated, it can cause all sorts of conflict. That may be an, at play in this relationship or in this situation right now. You're disappointed. You thought it was going to be better than this. And now you're looking at the future and you know that this is not what you really want. You don't really want this. So you're looking at ending it. You're looking at bringing this to completion or to closure. You're wrapping this up. You're looking at this as like, how is this going to end? There's the world card, the page of cups, the 10 of wands. This is really weighing heavily on your heart. You know, you're sensitive. You don't like conflict. You are emotional. You're loving. You're, you're even almost like apologetic or you you need to know that it's best not to apologize to or for this person or to enable this behavior like maybe in an effort to be so supportive you are also kind of enabling a little bit and here you're being encouraged to to take your power back to remember that you have the power to change your life you know what we did a reading for you yesterday healthy boundaries I feel like there's some of the same here. Healthy boundaries. You may want to look at that, Virgo, because there may be a message in that for you. I feel like this is kind of an extension of that reading in some ways. Healthy boundaries could help you to protect yourself so that you don't have to sacrifice yourself for the sake of others who, frankly, probably would not do the same for you. And I'm not judging them when I say this. We're not judging we're not condemning, but I'm certainly not going to condone their behavior either. We're just trying to understand and use our discernment so that you can make, you know, so we can make good choices for ourselves. Yeah, seven of cups. There's been so much confusion and maybe even deception. Someone's been kind of manipulative and this has got to change. It has to. This is changing. This is coming to a close. This chapter is ending. So you have a decision to make and you're not even really sure what to do in this situation. It may be a good idea to take some time to visualize your ideal future. What does that look like for you? What does success look like for you personally? Do you have a good answer for that? Maybe write it down. Practice visualizing a successful outcome. Meditate. See yourself in the situation and see yourself... Yeah, visualize yourself dealing with it in the best possible way. You accept that it is what it is, but that doesn't mean you have to stay there for the rest of your life or put up with something like this. Let's get you 
Um, an oracle, a Hecate oracle. We'll get you one card from Hecate. Let's get some advice for you from Hecate. Okay, we've got Black Hound, loyalty. Okay, so you've been loyal to this person, number 33, Black Hound. You are loyal. Where are your loyalties? Is this loyalty being returned to you? Is it reciprocated? Would they do the same for you? I don't know. The Hound of Hecate represents a sense of commitment and devotion. We may feel lost or isolated, thrashing about in the brush at the side of the long forgotten path, yet still find a glimmer of Hecate's guidance. The, the Hound acts as a protective guide, leading you back to her. The Barking Hound was said to herald the goddess's arrival and they are one of her most sacred animals. Adventure and curiosity are also present, as is an increase in psychic perception. So you may be feeling kind of lost and a little bit isolated in this right now. Yeah, look, there's the moon. So you're on this path and you're receiving guidance. You're going to receive guidance on what to do next. You may, yeah, look, at, that's so perfect. Like, it's always darkest before dawn here. There's an increase of psychic perception, adventure, and curiosity as you follow this path through the unknown. I feel like you're, you are seeing the way forward. You are protected and you're being led back to the path. If you've gotten off of the path, you're being gently redirected back to it. Yeah, there's a chariot. So this is spiritual growth and development, the nine of pentacles in a, in a very healthy way. So things are changing for the better for you. Let's get you a Woodland Wardens card. Right, so you're no longer going to be focused on the disappointments of the past at the expense of the success in the future that is still available to you. Not all is lost in this situation. I feel like it's a disillusionment in some ways. You're realizing that this is unhealthy. Something is just, it's not what you thought it was going to be. Okay, let's get one. What is the advice for, that's two. Stagnation and hope. Yeah, you may have felt like things have been stagnant, but there's a renewed sense of hope and optimism coming your way. Adaptability, adapting to the circumstances, adapting to a new set of circumstances. I'm gonna just get one for you though. Okay. Dreams and healing wounds came out. I feel like I'm supposed to take the two. Home and overcoming obstacles. All right, let's read. First of all, for dreams, number 20. A dream of yours is about to come true. Stay still, yet alert, like the Cayman, and at the right moment, seize your opportunity with relish. Your head is in the clouds. Instead of dwelling in fantasy, think about the practical steps you can take to achieve your wildest dreams. Yeah, I feel like someone's head is in the clouds. They've been dreaming, fantasizing about this, but not really living it yet. So your dreams need a practical solution. That's what you really need is the practical plan that's going to get you there instead of just dreaming about it, thinking about it, wanting it, imagining it, which is all good. Those are all important things to visualize. But what about the practical plan, the real like goals Setting up small goals in the meantime, one step at a time, will get you there. 
I feel like there's a really powerful creative energy here you can tap into. So ask yourself, what have I been dr dreaming about recently? How can I make my dreams a reality? But there's this other card here about healing wounds, number 32. I'm going to read for that as well. Your actions have hurt someone. Apologize and take steps to right your wrong, setting the stage for healing. Consider whether your own wounds have led you to inflict pain on others or someone has hurt you. The person in question may not be aware of their wrong, but your pain is undeniable. Be gentle with yourself. Oh my God, did you hear that? <laughs> it's so windy outside. That crash of like a tree branch on the roof. Anyway, uh, lick your wounds so you can heal property. Uh, I mean, pro <laughs> properly. Okay, healing, you know, giving yourself self-care to heal properly. Ask yourself, am I inflicting my own wounds on others? And what steps can I take towards healing? So hurt people hurt people, right? You may be unknown to you. You may have hurt someone's feelings. Or you are avoiding hurting someone's feelings, but it's hurting you. Something like that. Like someone, it, there's a need for healing here. Someone's feelings have gotten hurt. There needs to be an apology and accountability. Whoever it was, whether it was you or them, the pain is undeniable. So consider whether or not your own wounds have led you to inflict pain on others. Or maybe it's that they are wounded and that's where they're coming from. But you need to take good care of yourself. If someone's doing this to you, you you know, maybe they need to apologize or you need to. Someone needs to apologize, yeah. But it feels like someone's reluctant to talk about how they feel. So there may be some escapism here rather than taking a hard look at reality. And I feel like the advice is to, like, do you see this two of wands, how he's looking at the world? He's got the world in his hands and then the world card right here. And he's this figure, he or she is like looking at it, looking at the world, taking a hard look at the world, taking a hard look at reality. And maybe even assessing whether or not your expectations are even realistic because perhaps they're not. Perhaps reality in this situation is not what it seems. It was not what they made it out to be or it's not what you thought it was. It may not even be all that bad, but you know, it might just not be what you thought it was. And so rather than fighting a losing battle, and rather than escapism into some kind of, I don't know, substances or spending money or whatever it is that you do, it's like there's a need for, I just heard a reckoning or taking a hard look at the world, at the situation, taking a look in the mirror, really maybe even doing some soul searching. I think that the way you feel about a situation is going to change. This is changing how you feel. This is changing how you want to live. This is changing how you, like what you want is changing. It's a change of heart. Yeah, you may even be afraid to go in a new direction. You may have really negative expectations that are causing you to hesitate to take a leap of faith into the unknown or to take a step in a new direction. You may feel stuck or trapped like you can't leave. You are, you're stuck here in this job, in this lifestyle, in this situation, this marriage, this relationship, whatever, this family, whatever this is, you feel stuck here. You don't really see the way forward. But look, look, I see that a, a dream is coming true for you. Stay focused on your vision. I think having that confidence and that clear vision in yourself, knowing what you want, knowing what you stand for. Like you're waiting for this nine of cups. You're waiting for this dream to come in, for this wish fulfillment. And I see that it is. Your dream will come true. But are you sacrificing your dreams for someone else? Are you putting your dreams on hold? Are your dreams being deferred? 
What happens to a dream deferred? That's a poem. I think there's a message in that for you. I feel like someone's saying, I'm tired, I just don't wanna do this anymore. I'm gonna bring this to an end. I'm looking forward to the next right thing. What's the next thing? It will be different for different people. This is a general reading. But I feel like the next thing is going to be much more secure and stable, nurturing, grounded. You need a practical plan. You have the right idea. You have the capacity to make this dream come true. But you need a practical plan with steps. Like, practical plan, yeah, for the long term. But with, um, what is it when you, you make realistic steps? Like, you don't want to just say, oh... My plan is to be a millionaire and just leave it at that. Okay, well, that's a beautiful plan. We love that for you. How are you going to get there? What is step one? Step one may be different for different people. Step one may be, I don't know. What is, it depends on your goal. So breaking it down, breaking this big plan down into small achievable goals that you can do one step at a time. For instance, okay, if you want to move out, what do you need to do in order to move out of where you're living? Do you need your license? Do you need a job? Or do you already have those things? Do you need to do some paperwork? It's like get all those ducks in a row and one at a time take care of the tangible practical details in order to build up to that place where you actually make your dreams come true. Because it may be too much to handle biting off more than you can chew if you're just like going to have this big idea. It's beautiful to have a big idea, but those big ideas need small practical steps that you can take to build up to it. So I think that's the advice here. And it may start within yourself, first of all. Perhaps some kind of apology or reconciliation, some kind of healing needs to be done. Someone's obviously gotten hurt here. So, okay, instead of escapism and self-sacrifice, why don't we do um, a healthy dream of the future where you get what you want and get what you need, maybe different for different people, but this message still applies, and then you come up with some practical steps that you can take, small steps, realistic steps that you can take right now, today, tomorrow, this week, that get you one step closer to your goal. Then just move that ball down the court and eventually, if you start now, you'll get there. You will absolutely get there. Your dreams will come true, but it starts with you. That's what I've got for you today, Virgo. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was of service to you. If you enjoyed this and you'd like a personal reading, my email's in the description box below. You can email me. I'll let you know how it works. You let me know what you need. But in any case, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.